This meeting of the Eureka Spring City Council <coughs> come to order. Uh, the clerk will call roll. Establish quorum. Ken Paul Nall. No. Here. Parker Raphael. Here. Lenny Balance. I'm here. Which Berry? Excuse me. Hmm. Karen Lindblad. Here. James DeVito. Here. We have five. Okay, thank you. Everybody stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Next would be approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. Um, I would like to move, remove number eight from do business, take it off the agenda. There's a better place for it than the council meeting. I'm sorry, Ken. Yes. Where's the better place to discuss that than the council meeting? Budget meeting. I'll second that. Uh, also, I'd like to remove new business number five. Discussion of financial procedures to old business number one, so Lonnie can go home as soon as he gets done because he's got a couple hour drive over then. It's got to be back in the morning, too, and he's still in the recouping stage. For a second? I'll second that. Okay. Yes. I'd like to postpone item four under new business till the next meeting. For a second? Second. Anybody else? Mr. Penner. With the lead today in a new business, I'd like to add number nine discussion and status of the sign ordinance. I didn't understand that. Can you say that again, please? Discussion status of the sign ordinance. Under number two. For unfinished. New business number the new number eight or okay. the old number nine. Okay. Second. Anybody else? Mr. Penner. Uh, I was a uh, executive session for commission committee authority reports. Second. Okay, number nine. Now be the executive session. Where did you state you wanted it? After approval of the minutes. After approval of the minutes. After approval of the minutes. It was seconded. Mr. Penna. Uh, number 12 under unfinished yellow bag committee. Want to add it to it? It's already it's on the yes. agenda. It's under commission reports. It's not okay, under. We can't take any action under commission reports. Okay. And the second? Yes, I'll second. Anybody else? Okay, nothing else? All, approved, all the uh, in favor of the agenda is approved and amended. Say aye. 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 Can you say no? Okay. So it is. <clears throat> Next to be approval of the minutes. Move to approve. Second. For August the 27th of 2012. Any discussions, deletions, additions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed like sun? Okay. Minister approved. The executive session.
We'll be back in session. We're still missing a clerk and a uh, uh, attorney. So we'll wait till they get back. I'll go yell down the stairs. They're probably downstairs. There's three more. Okay, we are back in regular session. Just finished an executive session. There's a motion the council like to make regarding actions. Make a motion to discuss. Second. Wait and second. Floor is open. We need a motion. Uh, no, you made the motion. <laughs> Executive session at the next meeting for discussion of the commission action. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. All right. We now go to commission committee authority reports and expired terms. First one on the list is planning. Beverly, just come up. I wanted to let you know that um, the Planning Commission is going to have a training session sponsored by the Municipal League on September 19th that um, all the commissioners are going to be attending. And I also want to let you know that on August the 28th, we um, did have to approve a tree cut, and it's on Mountain Street, just a little bit up Mountain from Spring Street. It's a big, huge tree, and it's pretty much in the handicap parking space right there. It's sticking out into the handicap parking space. We, um, none of us are arborists on the planning commission, but we did hire an arborist to um, assess it and give us a report, and he even had to um, recommend that that tree be removed because under the arborist guidelines, if it's a certain lean, it has it, it's considered dangerous, and so we did have to do that. I wanted to let you know about it before you start getting phone calls if they start cutting it soon. Um, on your agendas, uh, number one is planning, and that can't be finished until number nine under new business is finished. So that should be postponed. Number four, the building permits, parking lots, and demolition. Um, <clears throat> you did receive an ordinance for that, but uh, the building inspector and the planning commission revised it and sent it back to your city attorney, so that's not um, ready at this time, so that can be postponed. <laughs> Number five, the weekly dwelling units. We are waiting for an ordinance for that and we do have a moratorium in place until October 23rd so I'm watching that time um, <clears throat> under new business the proposed changes for the B&B &B that we sent to the city attorney have not been finished yet so you don't have that um, number two under new business the research for the encroaching on the public property um, I didn't watch your last meeting, and I didn't know about it, but when I went to the Planning Commission meeting the next day, Don Lee told me about it, and so that is on our agenda <coughs> for tomorrow night, if you would um, please give me a little bit more time. And then um, the update for the zoning map, we did give you a written report on that today. And number four about the city festivals, um, Mr. DeVito postponed that till the next meeting. So I don't believe that you will need me anymore. Any questions? Well, Ms. Blankenship. He postponed number four. Yes. I'm sorry. Just for clarification, he did postpone number four. In the yes. agenda, so yeah. Approval of the agenda, I'm sorry. Okay, so go ahead. Move to suspend the rules and postpone item number two on your new business until the next meeting. Is there a second? Second. 
Any discussion on it? All in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, sorry. We'll get it. We'll Or is, that was, done was already done prior to, okay. So now what used to be number eight cemetery commission is now number eight sign ordinance. Has that one been postponed also due to, due to postponement of number one under new business, old business? No, that's just from okay. Mr. Ponell. Okay, just making sure. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, on commission committee authority reports, expired terms, uh, next to be CAPC, It'll be a vote on Mr. Lynn Bridwell, position number three, this has to be a renewal. Yes, sir. I'd move to accept the renomination of uh, Lynn Bridwell for position three on the CAPC. Second. Made and seconded. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Ms. Dallas, what's your vote? Yes, sir. One, three, two, two. three. Three, one, one. Mm -hmm. That's it, means he's in. <coughs> okay. No report on the hospital commission. I'm sorry, I, di I didn't, so I didn't yes, hear. I didn't hear what happened. Three one one. Three four. One against and one abstain. And you're not going to participate? Is it is it necessary for me to participate with a three one one? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. He's in. Okay. Uh, on the agenda as far as the hospital concerned, Mr. Pritchard was voted on last time, but there's a notation on here that says attorney's opinion regarding who renominates from 813 meeting. Mr. Weaver? I'm reading off the agenda. Yes, ma'am. That actually was a result of the discussion regarding Mary Jean Stella's nomination. was agreed that we would get an opinion on who was able to read on it. Can we turn off the air conditioner? I can't hear a word anybody. <laughs> uh, so. You need that restated, Mr. Penner? Please. Go ahead. Um, that was picked up from the 813 meeting when there was discussion about who would renominate after uh, the vote on Mary Jean South. Okay, is then the question whether someone other than the mayor has the authority to nominate for the commission after his nomination had failed on Ms. Sell, or what is the question, I guess? Because that was the meeting I wasn't at, the 813. Right. So what, what question is being referred? If there is going to be a renomination, how does it happen? It would come from the mayor. The mayor is the only one with the authority to renominate. Can, <coughs> can I read from the minutes? So the exact words, hopefully, are yes, the correct ones. It's under uh, hospital. Last paragraph after we had voted on Dr. Pritchard. Said Mayor Pate recalled the letter from the hospital commission regarding Mary Jean Cell. Discussion followed regarding who would renominate. Mr. DeVito requested an attorney's opinion. I don't think it addressed Dr. Pritchard, but the same would be applied because both have been voted down by the council. 
at this point there is no provision for a change in the way the uh, nominations are done uh, simply because someone has been voted down. The mayor has the right to nominate who the mayor believes is appropriate <coughs> for each position. That doesn't mean unless they're approved that they come into being if they're not already on the commission. But the, may the mayor would still be the nominating authority. Any further? Let's bounce my little bit. Is that by ordinance? In that, in that instance, I believe it comes from the state statute, but I'd have to go back and look. It it's varies by commission to commission. I think it is adopted in the ordinance, but I think it comes from the actual state statute in, in regard to the hospital. I'd have to look, though, to be sure. Right, but it's different for each commission. Each commission is not exactly the same, no. Sure. Mr. Pena. You've been recognized. Yes. Sir. Had, had we already voted once on Dr. Pritchard? Yes. For clarification. Okay. Yes, we did last time. So all we had for that one was the opinion on. Just the opinion. Okay. That's it. Okay. Nothing else on that one. We'll move to Parks. The last meeting, Ms. Rachel Bricks was nominated. This will be a vote. Mr. Penna. Move to approve Rachel Bricks for position 5, expiring 5-1-16. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Let's bounce. I have not been able to contact Ms. Breed. <coughs> Mr. Penna. Any further? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ms. Lynn Blake, what's your vote? Aye. I was, I was questioning what we were voting. We were voting on her or we were voting on We were voting on her, so we're not. Point of order. There was a motion, a second. We're voting on the yes. nomination. On the nomination. Okay, that's all I was asking for was clarification. Okay. That's what we got. Um, no. So that's two no's and three yeas? Correct. Yes. Yes. How's that break down again, please? Three yeses. Two no's. One abstain, one no. Who were the yeses? The three gentlemen at the table. Okay. Is that one needs to be broke by math? Huh? Three one one again. Uh, in order for anything to pass at this table, it needs four votes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Under HDC, no report. Cemetery. Ken, do you have anything on the cemetery? You want to bring um, the council? Yes, under Jim Westfall here. Okay. Yeah, we do have Mr. We do have Ms. June's uh, renomination, or re re upping, I should say. Yes. You, you do have her uh, application in front of you. Okay, yes, we do. Yes, Ms. June Westfall. This is a renew on her. Yes. Everybody should have a uh, copy of her application. Okay. And then I have some other stuff to have. Okay, come on up. Is that about right for you? Hi. Okay. Well, I can fix it for you. Okay. Uh, there you go. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Live with uh, it. Huh? My name is Ken Fugate. I'm the present chair of the Cemetery Commission. Um, Things are going quite well out there. We have our ups and downs. Um, Gloria is uh, one of our new commissioners, and she's going to give a slight uh, thank you for a lot of people that have been donating stuff and for the beautification of the cemetery. Uh, there's a couple things I want to bring to your attention. 
um, we need to rewire and to put in 35 light sockets for the light fixtures that are out there at the cemetery. Uh, they flicker and they short out. Uh, so that's just letting you know. That's how we're going to be spending some money down the road. Um, we'll need about 35 fixtures, uh, sockets, and about 400 feet of wire. We're trying to get donations, but uh, if, we, if we can't, we'll address that later. Uh, an urgent need right now is about 12 yards of topsoil. That's to fill in the depressions after a burial. You know, it sinks down, and people, the family wants it nice and level and a lawn growing. So that's that. Uh, we're still in the process of trying to find uh, funding for benches, stone benches. I talked to one lady uh, last week and she wanted permission to put a wrought iron bench out there and I told her sure she could as long as it was on her plot and the cemetery is not held liable for theft or damage and she agreed. So that's going to be taken care of. Uh, the issue of trees, I know uh, Mr. Mayor here um, helped out with a tree after a storm a couple of weeks ago. We had one tree, I think, removed. Uh, Tom, I spoke with him this morning. As a matter of fact, we had a workshop out at the cemetery, and Tom is estimating about 10 trees could stand to be removed. And he said that the cost is running around $600 uh, a tree. And then I, the, the, the last thing I had to say was to make sure that June Westfall is renominated. Uh, she's a great asset to the commission. She, you all know her. She's a lovely person and quite a historian. So, questions. any questions? Any questions, Mr. Powell? What was the number of trees? Uh, Tom estimated right now about 10 trees. There are about three that are like as soon as possible now, but overall about 10. Did he have any estimate costs on the topsoil or the... Uh, uh, the topsoil estimate is about $300 a yard. No, that's, that can't no. be right. <laughs> it's 12 yards at... Approximately three hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. How, about, how about the wire sockets? Uh, the wiring, we don't have any estimates or anything on that. It's too soon for that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Uh, if Ms. Gloria may. Uh, yes, you may. I can stand on that. What's this? Oh, wow. Well, I'm Gloria Stevens, and I am on the commission, as Ken said. I also was lucky enough to become the beautification committee of one. <laughs> so I've been working out there. If any of you have been out there, all at the front gates I've put in the gardens. But I'm working my way through the cemetery also. I have gotten so many donations, and I did not want that to go unnoticed by the people that were kind enough to do it. Bear Creek Nursery, they donated plants. Sunfest Market donated rose bushes, which are out there. Hearts Family Center today donated mums. Um, Bob from the Farmer's Market, and that's how he wanted himself known as Bob from the Farmer's Market. And Joanne from Between the Rivers Nursery, that woman has given us so much. Plants, trees, bushes, and I mean trees and bushes. So I'm ever so grateful to these people for that. And if any of you want to volunteer, I'm certainly open to it. Beautifying our cemetery. There you go. Any <laughs> Thank questions? You. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions? Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. So we're all on the agenda for tonight. Yes, sir, you are. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is <coughs> Yellowback Committee Research that was put on the agenda for discussion. Discussion. And that leads us to public comments. We have 11 people on the public comment, so each one will be given three minutes. So we'll start with Walter Burrell. Just a minute, Mr. Burrell is the top man, then Ms. Gloria.
Hey, guy. Yep, my assumption was correct. Hey, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, my name's Walter Burrell. I own Eureka Live and the Gilded Lily Bed and Breakfast. I'm here tonight to uh, urge you to consider, reconsider the uh, $5 limo. Um, it is a necessity to this town. It's as big a tourism uh, thing in this town as the carriage ride. I have nothing against the taxi. Uh, it's a necessity, too. I think the more people we have, the better off we are. Uh, but like Thursday night, we had to allow a uh, bartender to take off and take guests home who had ridden the trolley down and could not get a ride back. Um, I just, I don't think the town can afford to lose another tourist attraction. A lot of people have never ridden a limo and at five dollars a ride it's uh, something they can afford to do. And we've had several groups say that they will not be returning if that's not an option. We can't lower, afford to lose tourism. So I'm, I think that a vote against the $5 limo is a, you know, a vote against tourism, and we just can't afford it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Next up would be Judith Leswig. For you. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm yourself. Judith uh, Leswig, and I live at 30 Eureka Street, and I'm here to talk about the deer hunt. Uh, when I was asked to sign the nominating petition and then voted for one of the no voters, I assumed, obviously and correctly, that you would listen to the majority of the <laughs> voters and act to support the the voters' uh, wishes and decisions, and I really feel betrayed. Thank you, ma'am. Would you send Ed in? He's next on the list. Ed Leslie, for the record, will be next. Hello, Ed. Uh, you're going hey, you uh, to you make me uh, bump it up, aren't you? My name is Ed Leswig. I live at 30 Eureka Street. My comments also refer to the, the deer hunt. The whole concept of a city council is that a selected number of citizens would represent the many and protect the many's interests and support their ideas and actions, such as a legal official vote which define the majority's opinion and desire. If you as council members go against the defined position of the very people you swore to represent, you're reprehensible people. The three members who voted against the deer hunt are guilty of nonfeasance, failure to do what duty requires be done, malfeasance, a possibly illegal act, and misfeasance, the performance of an illegal, illegal act in an illegal manner. It is my belief that the three members of this council who voted no should leave, uh, to, to stop the deer hunt, should leave this table and submit their resignations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Number four is Steve Beecham. It's the room. A little extra. I'm going to pull on this cord for the microphone because if it goes up anymore, but it seems to be. Steve, just a minute. Okay, trying to get a little technical issue here. I don't want to pull anything out from yeah, okay. underneath. Okay. Maybe enough. Okay. All right, Steve, you should be good to go. I think the okay. screw that bottom on there. Please state your name, sir. Uh, my name is Steve Beecham. I live at 101 Owen Road here in Eureka Springs. Uh, I'm a 33-year resident of Eureka Springs. Uh, I'm here in regard to the deer hunt. 
It would appear that the August 13th council meeting, uh, the deer hunt was voted four to two to take place. That is what the ballot issue was about, and a majority of the voters side with the four votes to proceed. The hunters have been vetted by the city, as well as the Arkansas Game and Fish Committee, by being commissioned by being issued a bow hunting license. The so-called vagueness of the ballot issue was taken care of when this council asked the mayor to form a committee to set up the parameters of the hunt. It has the most stringent regulations of any urban hunt in Arkansas. I would like to suggest that the council at the end of this hunt review the success of the process and ask for citizen input and perhaps establish a study to solve the deer management issue for the future. A smaller population might stay small if the deer feeding ban is enforced. Please stop trying to usurp the basic tenets of the American system. A legitimate majority vote is a mandate to be carried out by those elected to do so. If nothing is done, this problem will still continue to grow. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Barbara Kellogg. We'll get her to close it behind me. Ms. Barbara Kellogg. We'll get Mr. Weaver's opinion on. There she is, right here. She snuck in the other way. Yep, here we go. We have to make a little Thank you. change there. You're welcome. My name is Barbara Kellogg. Um, I own 14 and 18 Nut Street. I'm here to stand up for the deer in this town. Um, I am completely against this hunt. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Gloria Stevens, you're on here again. We've got the markets right hot this time. Would you see if she's out there? I don't know. She wanted to. This was a separate issue from her cemetery. Hey, Mark. I'm not worried. Yes, yeah, I got that part. Okay. All right, hang on. Okay, let's see if she's. Apparently, she's not out there. Go ahead, Mark. Hi, everybody. My name is Mark Hughes. I live at 161 Cushing Street. And I'm sticking to the script. Bear with me. <clears throat> when I bought my house here five years ago, I was excited about the prospect of growing food and having a beautiful yard with flower beds and shrubs on my five lots of land. Gardening gives me the relaxation and pleasure that many feel when they watch deer grazing. Now I'm like other garden enthusiasts all over town who have given up on growing anything, even deer repellent plants. I have a thriving garden at my workplace because it is not a place deer can easily get to and it is upsetting to me that my residents cannot look the same. This spring, four fawns were born in my neighborhood and have since lost their spots, but at this moment there are a few more small fawns with spots in the yard, which means we have had two separate birthing seasons this summer. Game and Fish says that fawns do not leave the area they were born in, and I worry for the health of a fawn born so close to winter. At times I have had up to 20 deer in my yard. Clearly some neighborhoods are having more problems than others, and I feel like the 15 approved hunters will be more interested in those properties. The hunters are doing us a favor by participating in this hunt, and I think they deserve more respect than to be called a group of drunks with guns. Not by you. If the city had the funds to manage the deer population in a more humane way, we would. As it is, the hunt costs us nothing. The hunters are well-trained, experienced, and vetted by the Bow Hunters Association and approved by the city after their records are checked. They have paid a lot of money in licenses, fees, and equipment, and their record is spotless, according to Game and Fish. I tend to think anyone waiting in a tree for hours is not going to waste a $15 arrow on the first thing that moves, nor are they going to be drinking. If a property owner feels uncomfortable for any reason, they simply deny the hunter access that day. The shots we are hearing now are most likely being fired by property owners taking matters into their own hands, and that scares me more. 
25 of my neighbors and I came to you two years ago in search of a deer management plan. We spoke with you at meetings, listened to information from Game and Fish, and were satisfied to see a feeding ban put into place, even though we had to enforce it ourselves, pitting neighbor against neighbor. When I voted for a one-time hunt, I understood the dates and logistics were undetermined. I trusted City Council and the Mayor to appoint a committee to access all the information they could to put together an adequate hunt with the advice of Game and Fish, and I believe they have. It's been a long fight ever since, and many arguments have occurred between the best of friends. I'm not suggesting the deer be obliterated completely, only return to numbers that are safer for the herd as well as for us. I want a more natural balance of animals, humans, and vegetation. The herds continue to grow at a rapid pace, while this issue goes back and forth in the hands of council when you should be using differences, your differences to reach compromise. It is a time to go forward with this hunt as recommended by the Deer Hunt Committee as phase two of a continued deer management plan. Otherwise, Eureka Springs will cease to be a lovely garden city and become a petting zoo. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Miss Diane Stoll. Hi, Diane. Uh, my name is Diane Stoll. The main role of mayor and council is the safety and well-being of its citizenry. To think of 15 hunters armed with bows and arrows inside the city limits, roughly from dawn to dusk, seven days a week for 10 weeks, doesn't make me feel safer. The issue of the Lyme disease keeps being repeated, so I'm wondering if anyone on council has spoken to the local doctors to see if there is a, uh, a particular problem with this disease in town. I've lived here 32 years, and I've, two people have told me that they've got Lyme disease, but when I was talking to them about it, neither had been tested. They've had self-diagnosed through the Internet. So I, I, don't, I don't know that we have a problem. I, anyway, um, also, um, I know ticks can hit your eye on any warm-blooded animal, not just ticks. So I'm not sure why we keep talking only about ticks. Maybe we need to discuss that problem further if there is one. As for the well-being of the town, if you think the subject of an urban deer hunt is pitting neighbor against neighbor now, wait until the hunt is actually commences. I suspect this is a main reason Fish and Game chose not to include Eureka Springs in their protocol for the upcoming hunting season. Uh, two years ago, when Mr. Pate was running for mayor, he was asked his opinion of an in-town hunt. He responded that was one solution, but he wasn't sure it was the best one. So I'm curious as to what he was thinking of other possible solutions, whatever they are would probably not wound the entire town as this proposed hunt promises to do. Um, on July 7th, 2011, City Council um, had a meeting and Mr. Pownell made a motion to discuss the deer hunt. Barry seconded the motion, it carried, and the mayor at that meeting said that the bow season starts 10 one 11 through 2 29 12 and this would be a one-day hunt. So, he, he's, oh, I'm sorry. About a month ago, I talked to Mr. DeVito, and he surprised me when he said he was never for the hunt. Two weeks ago, Mr. Raphael told me on the phone that he thought Eureka Springs was the worst possible town to be holding a hunt. The mantra of this is, this is what the people voted for, gets weak when no one, including Fish and Game, can define what a one-time hunt is. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Karen Mills. Hi. Hello. How are you? Please introduce yourself. I'm Karen Mills. I live at 29 Douglas Street. For almost 30 years, I've lived on Douglas Street, and I have a deer problem. For that reason, I voted for the deer hunt in hopes of a deer management program for the city. 
So I encourage support for the management of deer as soon as possible from this body. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Pat Levine. I'm Pat Levine, and I live at 41 Alexander, and I believe I sent you all emails about our, how we feel about this. And one of my, it's emotional problem, but tick fever, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, is in this town. My son has it. He keeps reoccurring on him every time he feels ill. It spikes a fever. He's a policeman in Fayetteville. It is affecting his life. My neighbor across the street was hospitalized, undiagnosed, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever for three months. She <clears throat> stayed three weeks in the hospital with joints that were swelling. It is here, whether you all want to believe it or not, and it's a health and safety issue. Um, the other issue I have is kind of not related to the deer, but it sort of is. It's the state of our urban forests. With the last ice storm we had, two droughts, deers eating all of our hardwoods, our hardwood trees are in really poor shape. And there is a FireWise program that's through the fire department about clearing out the underbrush, knocking down the vines, the ivy that's choking the trees. These are issues that mean a lot to me as a gardener and someone that has lived at one address for 23 years. So we have seen the changes go on where when we first moved here, the garden, all we needed was a bunny fence. A few years later, we needed a higher fence. We have raccoons, we have all the critters, but we also have coyotes in this town. And anybody that doesn't believe that, a coyote is just as likely to get a small animal, a dog, or a child as an arrow. Um, there are coyotes, we've seen them. So, it's, we've got everything here in Eureka, and it's, a, it's management. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Mickey, Mickey Schneider. <coughs> Hi, Mickey. Hi, Citizen Mickey Schneider. I'm batting cleanup. So far, y'all have heard the words betrayed resignations, mandate, compromise, tourism, bills and fees. All of you here, whether you were elected or appointed, swore to uphold the will of the people. When you have a majority vote, you do the will of the people, not the will of yourself, your handful of friends, or the same two people that tell you over and over and over again something. When you come to safety, health, and well-being of the town and try to use that as the scapegoat for your horrendous actions two weeks ago, that doesn't cut it because we have more problems of car crashes, motorcycle accidents, <coughs> people dying from those kind of things than any other very unrealistic what if the arrow goes wrong. These deaths are absolute. What ifs don't cut it. I have not made a custom t-shirt for this table in years. I have made one today. That's how infuriated I am in regards to your actions of bitch slapping the voters. And that's exactly what you did. And don't shake your head because you are not by law allowed to respond in physical or verbal ways. That's exactly, yes, check the law. That's exactly what you did. You told these voters you don't give a damn what they voted for. The majority, too bad, it's not what you liked. That doesn't cut it either. All of these people that have come up here all feel the same. The people that you presumably have done this for 
are the ones who are going to get screwed the next time. When you decide to overturn their majority vote, that's exactly what's going on. This is America, not China, not Russia. You might want to keep in mind the swearing in that you took. Um, you know, if you want to win an issue like this, and I'm, the issue itself has me infuriated, but it's the actions of this table that have me absolutely livid. If you want your side to win and not have a deer hunt, then get your butts out there, go door to door, give them the facts, give them the laws, give them the research. And I don't mean old laws and old books have been removed from the books years ago. I mean actual facts. Talk to them. Reason with them, whatever. Don't turn around and slap them. That is pathetic. Thank you, ma'am. That will be the end of the people for public comments. Before we move on to unfinished business, um, there's an issue that, that we didn't address previously, and uh, Mr. Weaver has an opinion on the last vote. Where would, Mr. Weaver, where would you, what do you recommend? Um, it's not on the agenda for discussion, so. If they want to hear the opinion that orally that was sent to them, I understand in regard to the deer hunt, I will be glad to express that, but I think the council has to ask for that, otherwise they have it in writing, and I think it would address the issue and at that point uh, reverse what they took action at last meeting. Mr. DeVito. I would move. Uh, for the sake of those listening at home who didn't receive notification from the attorney that he would verbally uh, state his opinion regarding the vote at the last meeting on the deer hunt issue. Point of order, I believe we would need to uh, suspend the rules and head to the agenda. She's correct. We would need I to would do that. I would preface my remarks by suspending the rules. And adding to the agenda. Uh, sure. Um, about once upon a time we had deer hunt on our agenda uh, be on the other end of yellow bag 13 number 13 motion to suspend the rules and add deer hunt to number 13 under unfinished business second main second any further discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. suspending the rules oh, uh, uh, we, got, we have a roll call again we've got a roll call so. Yes. Ms. Raffia? Yes. Ms. Lindblad? Yes. Mr. DeVito? Yes. Four thank yeses, you. one abstention. Okay, thank you. All right, next is unfinished business. We approve number new business number five to be added to the first above number one of the unfinished business. So Lonnie could. Uh, get out of here and go to the house because he's got to be back in the morning. <clears throat> this would be on the agenda it states discussion of financial procedures. Motion to discuss. So okay. moved. Need a second. second. Main second. Discussion. Yes, sir. This is going to be just like the last time. This isn't something to be discussed at the table. There was no need of Mr. Clark's attendance. I think this needs to be in a workshop. We move to set up a workshop to discuss the financial parts of the city code. Second. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Could this possibly be in the budget review process? Further? Yes, sir. I'd like to see it. It's so hard to get everybody together. It'd be nice to have the budget review, which should be coming up as soon as we can 
get the dates on that. I second that motion. Add this discussion to the financial workshop, the financial workshop, the budget workshop. Yes, either okay. before or after. Okay. I'll make a motion. Make a motion. Yeah. Okay, There's a motion and seconded by Mr. Devito. In for a discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, zero, zero. All right. Thank you very much, Lon. Unless you just want to hang around, you're, you're out of here. <laughs> okay, thank you. We'll see you in the morning. All right. Number one, under unfinished business has been postponed. That opens number two, ordinance 2155 would be the limo third reading. We'll uh, discuss. Second. Main second. Floor is open. Kind of. I'd like the city attorney's opinion. Uh, since we've been beat about the head and shoulders for going against the will of the people, there was a vote some time ago that voted down the supposed uh, 2051 ordinance regarding an ordinance for licensing and operation of taxi cabs and limos, uh, where the people voted against it uh, four years ago. Are we uh, in violation of the people's vote by? working on this ordinance? I think that the uh, people addressed a much more broad uh, issue or issues in that particular matter than is right here. Although if the council believes that uh, they are mandated by the people uh, in that instance, certainly you could see it that way. But that ordinance that was uh, looked at at that time was far more encompassing than what you have before you, I think, today. And had a much broader effect in how it would have been applied to limos, taxis in general. But uh, if you feel that you are mandated by that vote, I certainly could not uh, fault you for that, uh, but I think that this is a much narrower provision than what you were, what the people were looking at when they went to those, to the polls. Ms. Lindley? I move that we suspend the rules in three ordinance 2155 for third reading. By title only. By title only. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. I'll, I'll restate my position on this. I, I feel that a two-hour wait between the time that uh, a call is placed for a limousine and the actual pickup would suffice in uh, precluding limousines from operating in the manner of a taxi. I feel that by requiring a two-hour minimum rental that I mean, we basically are putting some of the strictest regulations on any business in the community. I, I feel it's a, a bit of an overreach on our part, and I, and I still feel that a simple two-hour wait uh, would suffice in, in maintaining the integrity of the taxi in the community. Ms. Lemba. Well, there are other cities that have three-hour requirements, <coughs> so I think that... This is a nice compromise in between. Any further? Yes. Uh, I would state that probably those cities are much larger population areas. Um, you know, uh, we're a very small city, uh, and I feel that it would disproportionately affect the one or two limousine providers that we have. Any further? Okay, motion on table to spend the rules. We have a third reading by ballot title only, or ordinance title only. Yes, sir. Clar clarification of where in the ordinance uh, Mr. DeVito's question was, was because there's only, the only thing I can find is the reference of a two-hour minimum rental, not a two-hour notice. Is that what, I thought that was proposed to be added back in. Last time. No. Any further? Okay. 
All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Oh, Mrs. Benward. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll catch on that one of these days. Mr. Raphael? Yes. Mr. Pownell? No. Ms. Balance? Yes. Mr. DeVito? No. Ms. Lindblad? Yes. 3 2. Can't vote. Okay. We sent number three action on non participating commissioners. Point, point of clarification. Yes, what, where does that leave the status of 2155? I make a motion to approve ordinance number 2155. Mr. Weaver, what is your Actually, opinion? Actually, the proper procedure at this point would be your motion would be to read it in full because it failed to be read in by title only. Uh, you still have to read it before you approve it. So you're moving it to approve would be premature until you've read it. Okay. Motion to read. Might, might I ask that there not be any coaching across the table? I've noticed that. Okay. Motion is to. If y'all are, are, are ready, we'll go ahead. Okay. I'm a second. I'm a second. I'm a second. I second it. Thank you. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 I don't understand the motion. To read it. You have to read the whole one. Yes. Because I'm not hearing the answers, let's go ahead. Does everybody understand the motion? The motion is to read the entire ordinance one more time. Ms. Bounds? Yes. Mr. DeVito? No. Mr. Pownall? No. Mr. Raphael? Yes. Ms. Lindblad? Yes. 3 2. Do I need to vote? You can vote in the affirmative if you wish it read, otherwise, you would not vote. I would not vote. Yes. Now back to my question. So much for democracy. Is what is the status of 2155 for clarification at this time? Mr. Weaver? It's been council's prior uh, procedure that if it failed on its third vote in this manner, that it is dead until uh, changed or brought back in another form. Okay, moves us on to number three then. Action on non participating commissioners. Motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Main second, the floor is open. Mr. Panner. Uh, I don't know where this uh, list came from. I'm assuming it came from a compilation of uh, inputs from the different commissions. Or the code. Uh, again, I'd still like to know where stuff comes from. It appears that every commission has uh, either in the code itself or within their rules and procedures guidelines for actions of commissioners. Uh, no, it only seems to be one missing, and that's the hospital. Uh, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to read them or not, but uh, 
to the most part, uh, they seem fairly covering each each commission. It's just that uh, without directing this towards any one commission, it's it's like the fable of the chicken running around that the sky is falling, that people aren't participating yet, the commissions don't follow their own rules, so I guess they uh, have to live with their own actions or press on, and I believe that in most cases that uh, if anything is decided to be uh, taken action on, it has to go through the mayor's office, and I assume that since we haven't gotten anything, that the mayor hasn't gotten anything either from any of these commissions regarding non-participation and requesting action be taken against them by removal or otherwise. So I would make a motion to take this item off the agenda. Second. Made second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Ms. Bellins? Aye. It is removed. Moves us to number seven, discussion auditorium agreement, 2013. Update on taxi franchise. I'm sorry. Uh, we were unable. We were unable to yeah, meet Johnson. at the uh, last scheduled meeting, and uh, Ms. Armstrong is trying to schedule another date for another meeting. And that's about it. Any further? Mr. Penna. We would postpone this action until the city clerk comes up with a uh, amiable date for the workshop. Second. Main second. Any further? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, number seven now okay, is the discussion auditorium agreement 2013. So moved. Second. Main second. second. The floor is open. Yes, sir. Where are we at? I'm supposed to get with Mr. Maloney in the morning at the department head meeting to discuss this further. That's where we're at. Yes, sir. Um, I can't remember the last meeting where we brought this up and we talked about three years and there was not a consensus on council to enter into a three-year agreement? I, I can't remember. Yes, sir. Change to multi-year. Multi-year, okay. Mm -hmm. Ms. Lindblad. Well, I'm not very happy with this agreement at all. I talked to a current commissioner today who told me that when I told him that uh, it was reported to me that there were some women recently for a festival concert that was going on at the auditorium who were roaming around town trying to figure out how to get tickets because the auditorium wasn't open the day of the performance. Uh, it says operate the facility on a daily basis determining the hours of operation and, and staffing requirements then do all booking and contracts for users using rates establishing CAC and CAPC as well as guidelines. You know, the CAPC has a pretty large budget. The auditorium is the jewel in the crown of this town. When we were having a lot of shows there, no matter what the CAPC says, people were coming to town. And I have had people who come to town tell me they haven't been here in a while because there hasn't been much going on. When people want tickets, they have to do them online, even if you live here. And the CAPC only makes tickets available right before the performance, which means that people can get all dressed up and ready to go to the performance and find out that they can't get tickets if they can't do them online or if they don't know that they have to do them online. Also, um, you know, it says right here in the state statute, um, about the CAPC dealing with construction, reconstruction, extent, extension, equipment, improvement, maintenance, repair, and operation of a convention center. 
operation of tourist of tourist promotion facilities in the city or county where the city is located. The city owns an interest in the convention center facility, the facility necessary supporting and otherwise pertaining to the convention center, and then it says uh, other things, expenses in connection with bonds, blah, blah, blah. But I don't see that the CAPC really contributes much at all to the um, to the auditorium. And when I was on council before, the CAPC was claiming they were paying all the expenses for the bathrooms, but in fact, the city was reimbursing them for all of those things. And since this is a facility that brings people to Eureka Springs, I think the CAPC should be contributing more than what they are contributing to help pay for the auditorium. And I think at the very least, if there's an event going on at the auditorium, there should be someone there during the day to sell tickets because the CAPC claims over and over and over again, oh, well, you know, the things that get booked in the auditorium don't make money. Well, when you've got people that want to buy tickets, especially the day of the concert, and they don't know how to get them or they can't get them, that's ridiculous to me. You know, when people come to town and they're walking around, they're, first of all, not carrying a computer with them. I suppose you could say they're iPhones. But they don't necessarily know that that's the only way that they can get tickets. And when they see a poster that's advertising the auditorium, they think they can go there and get tickets. And it used to be open. So I think before anything goes on with a uh, contract with the CAPC, that it should be looked into the way that they're operating the facility. And I think that, that we should look into them paying a higher share of what, what they're responsible for. Because really, the city is paying for all of the really important things that are going on, like liability and property insurance, maintenance for the facility, except responsibility for and hold the CATC the harmless any state and federally mandated shortages in the facility, maintain the safety system mandated for the facility, and pay the utility <coughs> bills. And according to the state statute, a lot more is supposed to be going on from the CAPC than that. And I know the CAPC claims all they're supposed to do is advertise, but that